any tree that is hardy in Toronto is growing in the Mount Pleasant Cemetery. So it's a great place to just go and learn about trees and learn about tree identification because many of them have little labels on them. I spent a lot of my youth kicking leaves and, um, and playing around in High Park and the, the mature forest there is absolutely stunning. In the woods in the fall, I kind of like the tamarack. There's just something about those golden needles and there's something really beautiful about an, an evergreen that actually sheds. It's, you know, it's just a very special. But uh, give me a good old, uh, you know, just a staghorn sumac. There's just something about them on the hillside that I really like as well. For us, the tree tour project has become a really great way to, to reach out to some different communities because um, each tour we look to have a co-leader, so someone from the community where the tour is happening who actually leads the tour with us. My name is Shannon and I work with Green City and we did a partnership with LEAF this summer to put on uh, the Parkdale's first tree tour. I did a lot of the action photographing during the tour, so I'd be running ahead of groups of people, uh, all kinds of pictures, of, you know, Todd with his hands spread out, uh, with his head cast to the sky, uh, you know, describing something to everyone and everybody looking up at the tree. By looking at the trees and explaining, um, I don't know, if they were talking about the root system, it was more visual and we could make a better connection that way. Like I said, it was an amazing experience for the youth to actually help plan the tour as well as speak on it, but they, uh, got all interested in trees and they said you know now when I walk down the street I'm looking up and wondering about that tree. You realize that you're a part of a much broader constituency that's really keen on the trees of Toronto and hungry for stories about them and I think that the the kind of root through to people the root of stories is the way to go. My name is Shannon and I'm going to make sure our local children at our local school have some trees to play under. We often hear Toronto called a very green city and um, in some ways it is. I mean if you fly overhead and you look at Toronto's canopy it looks quite green. There's a lot of area that's covered with trees. Now that's shrinking it's uh, at around 17 percent. The challenge in Toronto seems to be that you've got um, a real tension between development and the right thing to do. So taking out a few trees and being fined ten thousand dollars a tree is nothing in the in the scope of a larger project. They want that damn quick fix um, that you know pull the wool over everyone's eyes and there's a history to that kind of behavior as well. I did a whole paper on sort of where planning and the urban forests intersect, and a large part of my paper was that they don't. There are some threats to native plant gardens that you wouldn't think we're still at the point where we cut down, you know, habitats because they're messy. People want to protect the things that they own, so if you have a, a black walnut in your driveway and the, those walnuts are coming down on your car, I mean, you can kind of understand where they're coming from. But I don't think that I don't think that the, that they're taking the whole picture into into perspective. And I'm also convinced that part of the problem that people aren't as concerned about the urban environment as they might be is that they drive around too much. Because when you walk around, you see things that you wouldn't see it if you're driving. When you do look up, you see a trunk and a big canopy from the tree, and you don't see anything that's happening below the ground. And usually the ground means either really hardened turf that's been beaten down by feet and cars, or just concrete. It is sad when you nonetheless see a tree planted, you know, so obviously there's some effort and some thought and care to plant a tree and then it's got this much earth. People can't possibly really imagine that because they literally don't see the roots. Um, they never think that the roots are maybe two or three times or four times the size of the canopy. Increasing that canopy has been identified by the city as one of its main goals and it's um, plan to address climate change, which is really exciting. So the, the goal is to double the canopy by 2050. The message has to get out a lot more about the need to water the trees and our boulevards and in front of our houses. I think of it as planting carrots 
you plant a tree, the last five years you take it out, plant another tree, and that's sort of what the city is doing now. I think if all of us took more of a sense of uh, stewardship over that public resource, um, our urban forest would be a lot healthier. It's kind of hypocritical to say, well, let's plant, you know, 40,000 trees this year, and meanwhile, we're not looking after what's already there. I'm Lorraine, and I'm going to write an article about the deficiency in Toronto's private tree bylaw. One thing you do as a volunteer, you bring your skill set to the organization, and then, uh, then you want to measure, uh, basically, uh, how that fits. And then you want to look at the organization and what it, what it gives back uh, to you as well. My name is Janet, and I volunteer at LEAF. I'm Barbara Goss. I've, I'm a volunteer for LEAF Toronto. I'm Lorraine Johnson, and I've been a LEAF board member for about a year. Hi, I'm Dan, and uh, I'm a volunteer with LEAF. My name is Chris. I'm a board mem member of LEAF. Have been for the last uh, year and a half. I don't remember where I actually saw the ad for it or the uh, announcement for it, but I ended up there anyway and was impressed immediately. They came to me and asked me if I was interested in being on the board because I write about native plants and promote protection of the urban forest. And I was really honored to be asked because I'm a big fan of the work that LEAF does. I come to LEAF with a, uh, a history of interest in trees. Um, I photographed trees for many years as an artist. I had a coffee with Janet and uh, she suggested that um, the tree tours uh, might need someone to help them uh, get off the ground because that was at the point where they were just being designed. I just wanted to plant the trees. I think it was, this was the first event that I participated in with LEAF and I, I really just wanted to get my hands dirty. It's very local for me. It's just, it's, I try to live uh, daily and the takeaway for me is that day that I go there. I think I've volunteered at three, four, or five of those kinds of events. My name is Barbara, and I'm going to Mongolia to plant more trees. The test will come.